tell everyone our project is called hashtag hashtag. So the problem we're trying to tackle is to generate content relevant hashtag for food pictures on social media. So our application might find its use for people who might want to understand current trends on social media, as well as food photographers who want to gain a larger following on social media. The data for our model would be images we have crawled from Instagram, and the label would be hashtag that are found with those posts. So since our problem is a multi-class, multi-label classification problem with, with a lot of classes, uh, accuracy itself is not a really good metric because the model can simply output all zero to cheat. So we'll also be considering the F2 score and the number of tr uh, truths the model returns. So for our data, we used an uh, Instagram crawler uh, from GitHub, and we crawled 100 images from 100 Instagram um, food, uh, food Instagrammers. And due to some uh, Instagram policy updates and issue with the crawler, this is the count we get for our overfit and the large data set. And these are some distribution of like no, uh, occurrence of hashtags and hashtag, uh, number of hashtags per images for uh, both data set. And there's some potential issues with our data set. Uh, we have way more hashtags than our uh, images, and we have an equal representation of those hashtags. And Instagram filters may also alter our results. So for pre-processing, we resize the images to 200 and by 200 pixels, and we use color jitter to uh, address the filters, and we also no normalize the input. And we decide not to uh, address the uh, class imbalance because we do want to uh, preserve the popularity of hashtags in our data set for the model to learn that. And for, uh, for our model, our baseline model is just a single CN with four convolutional layers and uh, mask pooling layers, and we also use two fully connected layers to adjust the size. So it predicts which hashtag to use. And for loss function, we used a combination of binary, uh, binary cross entropy and the K out divergence. And for our main model, in, the, in addition to the baseline, we, uh, the CNN outputs to uh, are just like a vector that, uh, that's with the same size of the hashtag embeddings, and we use cosine distance to determine which hashtag to use. And we use the same loss function as the baseline. And why this? Uh, complicated uh, loss function because we found out like our machine tend to predict all zeros to cheat and we, during our experiments we found KL divergence tend to promote uh, positive predictions and the uh, binary cross entropy tend to just uh, maximize the overall uh, accuracy so we just took a linear combination of the two. And this is after we use the new loss function we can see like the true number of true positives kind of hold steady and we the false positive numbers just uh, decrease. And this is what happens before we use the loss function, and we just don't have positive predictions. Right, so to generate the embedding for our model, we use the type of word to vec model called skipgram. So it's essentially a two layer perception that takes in words and output as context, like the one we saw in the midterm. So the way we use it is to, oh, so the way we use it is to treat the, all the hashtag under the same post as a sentence and treat each individual hashtag as a word, and we feed it into it just like any other word to vec model. So the key parameter that we have to optimize are the embedding size, the window size, and the number of epochs. So through, uh, through, through some testing, we found out that when the number of epochs or the window size get too big, the model tend to, tend to diverge, so we chose a relatively small window size. And for embedding size, it doesn't really affect much, doesn't really affect the accuracy or the F2 score much, so we just chose the smallest one we could. Uh, so for our results, for the first metric is accuracy, and uh, we found out like our um, uh, model pick up the accuracy pretty fast because like it's just predicting all zeros. And after, uh, so we also introduced the F2 score, which emphasized the number of true, pos true positive predictions and care less about the negative ex uh, predictions. And our model doesn't really do good on that, and uh, also, uh, even with the help of the new loss function. And uh, when we examined the number of uh, true positive and false positive numbers, we found that the, uh, our loss function kind of like stabilized the number of positive, uh, positive predictions uh, our, the model makes. So for baseline, it stables at like, like 21, and for our model, it's, uh, it's stable like, like 130-ish. Yeah, to further ex examine why our model performs so poorly, we have some qualitative results. So for the baseline model, you can see that for two pictures, that's output to the same hashtag. So this confirms that our model is kind of just outputting just the most popular hashtag. And for, the, uh, for our main model, we can see that's not really the case, but it's, it's not really correct either. One other thing to note is that even though uh, the, uh, uh, the hashtags don't really fit the label, but they do seem kind of relevant because they're all related to food. So that kind of make us think, make us think about maybe the accuracy, maybe, maybe the labels are not really the best way to judge whether a hashtag is correct, nor is it a really good measure of how good the model performs. Another thing that we notice is that a lot of the hashtags are not really relevant to just the picture. 
because they also take into account of such as the location of the, the location of where the post is, the picture is taken, as well as other contexts. So that may that that might might be indicating that the pictures are not really correlated strongly correlated with hashtags. So another issue with our model is that hash for to use the word to vec, we're assuming that hashtags work like words, but in, in, in truth they're very different. Hashtags are not regulated by grammar. Sometimes they appear only once, and then we don't nearly have a large enough corpus to learn. And another issue is that when having a lot of classes, we don't really have a large en enough data set to warrant this number of classes. So what we, we might want to do in the future would be collecting more data, we're reducing the number of classes. Yes. First slide? Yeah. Uh, this one. Yeah, can you, no, I just didn't catch you. Can you just say, say that one more time? What the goal? Oh, so the goal is to generate content relevant hashtags. So, like, if it's a picture, we want to. Yeah, that's the thing, really quick. Content relevant hashtags. Yes. For food pictures. From the picture, we want relevant hashtags. Yes. I also recall that you had a hypothesis that said if people put in lots of hashtags, and if they're all, uh, and they're all similar in meaning, that was one of your hypotheses. Yes. And then, and then, so I'll set up a question to say um, you tried to train your own word vectors. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I don't think I caught, you said uh, the skip brand model or something about what you were trying to, what, uh, you kind, kind of comment, comment at the end that it doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what you thought would work. Oh. Uh, that related back, what, what was the input and the output of that training loop, just the word vector training Uh, You mean for the skip brand model? Yeah. For the vectors, the right. training vectors, yes. the way that I think you learned in the class. Yes. Uh, what was the input and what was the output in the training in the network? For the word for the skip grant model. Yeah. For the word to vec. So the input would be so we ha so there's the window size. The input would be the word and the hashtag and a hashtag around it within okay. the same oh, post. Within a window size. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so and, yeah. And how successful were you at predicting that? So mm. that's a network that just predicts local uh, hashtags, given yes. a local hashtag. Yes. Yeah. So the accuracy is like around one, but the F2 score kind of oscillates a little bit. And so point to something that shows me the word accuracy on the y-axis. Every one of those? Every one of those things? Right, all of them are accuracy. So the, so the orange ones are accuracy, and the blue ones are the F2 score. Orange is accuracy, so the last scale goes up to one. Yeah. So it's super successful predicting neighboring ones. It's pretty good. No, it's like very successful. I would, you normally wouldn't expect that to be so successful. Mm -hmm. And you said it was a, as a function of the window size? Uh, it's a function of the window size and the. Uh, and what window size? Well, you said window size of five. Five. Like, ideally, we want to have a window size that's really big because, like, a, hashtag, a post can have up to 32 hashtags. But then what we discovered is that it kind of diverges. Okay. And can you just explain what you did with the word vectors? How those word vectors were used to predict pictures, hashtags? Right. So, so uh, the model, pr uh, so uh, for our baseline, it just produce, uh, is produced like a vector, like saying, uh, wait. Picture is the, input. Uh, the picture, picture is the input, and we use a, C uh, a CNN and uh, full connect layers to produce a vector which has the same size with those hashtag embeddings. And okay, so you try to predict the embedding. Yeah, and. Here. Uh, this is the baseline. Oh, this is the baseline. We're going to use a picture, just say, yeah, like. How about uh, the final report, though? So, so uh, next, next, so slide. next slide. So the goal was to predict the embedding. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, uh, and and so, so what's the, the, show me the success of that. Or show, show me a, full, a single plot that talks about the success or not of that. Uh, let's see. 
here. Uh, this is the F2 score and just like... Yeah, so accuracy doesn't really mean anything because yeah, the model... The, uh, I didn't understand all zeros. What does it mean? You said all zeros gets you a high accuracy. You don't understand. Right, so we have like around 3,000 classes. Yeah. And then within every any given post, only like five or five or ten of those that are oh, activated. So you just pick. Yeah, all zero, then accuracy goes to like 90%, 95%. But then all of them, it doesn't really mean anything. So that's why you're hanging up different uh, like. uh, yeah, yeah, so, so my, my comment, comment is actually, actually on your last one. Yes. Uh, I think you need to be careful with how you justify your choices here. Uh, so KL divergence and cross entropy have the same gradient. Uh, so oh. the actual learning signal that they would get in either only differs by the seed value and other parameterizations that are that have to do with initialization. I see. Uh, the two loss functions will get you to the same place given a uh, deterministic system. Mm -hmm. So to say that KL divergence encourages positive labels is uh, okay. So just be careful. It's fine to experiment with loss functions, but be careful with your justifications and try and figure out why you're choosing that loss function. Mm. Okay. What's so the one thing you would do differently if you're going to do this over again? Um, I would instead of using this approach, we would have, um, we'll we'll just do object detection and classify what's in the picture. So let's say maybe there's like bread, then we'll I'll put in a bunch of hashtag related to bread. Maybe it's like meat, then we'll do a lot of related to meat. If it's not meat, we do vegan, stuff like that. So you have to match up against the hashtags, because those are your... Yeah, your and we'll, we will also consider location and the description of the post, because we also, what we also found is that hashtag doesn't really only correspond with the picture. So like if it's taken in friends, they might ask some hashtag that's related to the location. This is a challenging, challenging thing, thing to try to do. To do. Yeah. That's <laughs> so you learned a lot. Uh, that's that's great. Any comments, questions? Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.